Hey guys, Greg here from Lens Pro to Go, and a couple days back, Adobe released a brand new version of Lightroom CC. They still have the old version, which they're now calling Lightroom Classic CC, and then this new release, which is a cloud-based Lightroom that is just called Lightroom CC. It's a little bit confusing, and I'm not gonna talk much about the differences between the two. There's tons of other videos out there if you wanna go check those out. I just really wanna give you an overview and talk about my thoughts on the new program, and I think it's gonna be valuable and a good workflow for me. So let's hop over to the phone and get started. So when you first open up Lightroom CC, this is gonna be the page that you're greeted with. In the top left, you have a little Lightroom logo. And then over on the right, you have a magnification glass. This uses the new Sensei search tool, which I think they've had for a little while actually, so it's not that new. But it allows you to search for a specific item and then that'll pull up. So if I search for dog, it's gonna pull up all the photos that it thinks has a dog in it. If I search for car, it'll pull up all the photos with a car in it. If I search for a specific color, it'll pull up any photos that have that color in it. This is a really powerful tool for being able to quickly search through all your images, especially if you have thousands of images. I almost have a thousand on here, I have 850. So it's really easy to jump through those photos quickly. Next, you have a little cloud icon, and this just shows that all of your photos are synced or backed up, and then you can start or stop syncing photos from your phone. Right below that, you have all photos, and then you have your albums. These are basically the new collections. So it's like the albums that are on your phone, you just create it and then name it whatever you want. Say this is hiking or travel photos, and you can put all the photos into that. These are wedding photos, or these are car photos, and have those different albums for whatever you want. Then down at the bottom, you have these two blue icons. The one on the left opens up your camera roll, and you can import photos from there. And then on the right, you can open up a camera app. Now you can see my camera right here, and this isn't just the camera app that's in your phone, this is actually Lightroom's own app. And the great thing about this is right here where it says auto, you can click that and switch over to professional. This allows you to manually change all of your camera settings. So you can adjust your exposure compensation, you can adjust your shutter speed, your ISO level, your white balance, and then you can even adjust the manual focus. So if I click that right here, I can go from 0%, which is close focus, and then I can drag it slowly. You'll see I get that peaking, so you know that's in focus right now. Zero to 100%, and then that's at infinity. And like most photo taking apps now, you get some filters to play with, but I'm not really gonna play around with those. So let's get out of that and go back into the editor. Now let's just jump into all photos here. So here you can see all my photos, and like I said, I have about 850 photos, and these are all stored in the cloud. So let me try and scrub ahead of it here and see how fast it can catch up. It's pretty darn quick for having full RAWs. So you can see I have all of these are raw types. Just by double clicking, I can see some quick information about it. I can see how all the images were shot, the EXIF information, and then we can go to nothing. Even just this is a really good way to go through all of these photos really quickly. Again, you have your search tool at the top here, which uses that Sensei search. So you can search for whatever you want, if it's a theme or a specific item that you're looking for. Then you have your filter set, so you have no filter, you can filter by photo or video, unflagged, picked, rejected, and then search by a star rating if you want to. I'm gonna to go to picked because I have a few pulled out here back into the grid view. We have the share tool, so this allows you to share it via email or some other social media. You can save it to your camera roll, save to files, open in and edit in. The share is really nice because you can select a bunch of files at once and then you can share those out pretty quickly just like you can in your photos app. Then you have the cloud again just to make sure all your photos are synced up and see what the syncing status is. And then we have this last little menu here which changes the view options. So we have grid view or you can do segmented so this will break it up by date. Then we have sort by capture date so when the photo is actually taken, modified date, a couple other settings in there. You can add photos, copy to, delete, or present which will actually play a quick slideshow of all the photos that you have in this view right here. And then at the bottom again you have your add photo from camera roll or take a photo. But let's take a look at some editing and jump into this photo right here. Now at the top, you have your back button to go back to the previous gallery. You have this drop down menu with edit, rate and review, activity, keywords and info. In edit, we'll jump into this a little more in a second. In the review tab, by sliding up or down on the right side of the screen, you can flag, unflag or reject certain photos. On the left side, you can actually rate the starring. So you can do one through five on the stars. If we go down to activity, if this is shared with other people, you can actually have comments going back and forth and have a discussion on that photo. Keywords allow you to keyword it, obviously, just like you could in Lightroom. And then info gives you all the info about that photo that Lightroom knows. So what camera it was shot on, what lens, camera settings, uh, raw file format, 
all of that good stuff. Let's jump back into the editor. So again, on the top, we have the share, so you can save it out to your camera roll, the cloud, so you can make sure stuff is synced up. And then you have this extra little menu that you can show or hide information, and you can change that to histogram or nothing or a bunch of other information just by clicking it with one finger. I'm just gonna turn that off. And now down on the bottom, we're getting to all of the fun tools. So this first one is the selective max. So this is basically adding brush tools and selectively coloring or editing a part of the photo. You have the gradient, radial wipe, or just the brush tool. I'll just click the brush tool here. And then on the left, you get four options. This first one is actually the brush size. So if I go up or down, it's gonna shrink or grow the size of the brush. The next one is the feathering. So if I click that and hold and go up or down, I can choose how much I want it to feather or how hard of an edge I want it to be. And the last one is the flow. So this is gonna be the opacity if I want it to be 100% or if I want it to just be faded on there. And then you have a delete after we've actually done something. So let's just draw on and try to expose this car here a little bit more than it is. So I have it all colored. And now I get all my editing tools on the bottom here. I can erase sections, I can add more, or I can start adjusting. So let's just adjust our exposure here. We can adjust the contrast a little bit, bring the highlights down. And you can do all of your settings in here so you can change your colors, your temperature, saturation, detail, perspective, add effects, dehaze, clarity, vignetting, all of that stuff right in the app, which is pretty amazing. Let's just save that, and then we can click and hold, and we'll get a before and after. Now let's say we like this, we can just go back and then move on to the next photo. Let's jump into this one right here. The next tab is your crop, so you can crop in and rotate, just like you can in the full Lightroom. So that's looking pretty good. Let's get that whole tent out of there. Yep, I like how that looks. Uh, and then you get a bunch of options for different aspect ratios. You can straighten it flip it horizontally or vertically, rotate it if you want. I'm just gonna leave it how it is and hit check. Next, you get your presets. So these are all the ones that are custom built in there. There's color, creative, black and white, and components. Components adds different types of curves or shadow lifts or vignettes, uh, which all of this you can do on your own. Uh, presets are just a quicker way to do that. So let's just do natural and we can get out of the presets. Next is your light. So this is gonna be your exposure settings, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. If you've used Lightroom, you know what those are. I'm not gonna go through them. And the cool thing in here is you can also do your curves. So this drops in and you can have an easy flow or you can do a point curve system. And you can also do for your R, G, and B channels. And it just gives you this nice little overlay, which is really cool. We're gonna to go to color next. And this is just your main color settings, so your color temperature, your tint, so it's green or magenta, vibrance, saturation. But back up top, you have this little option for mix. This gives you your HSL slider. So you have your red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. And you can do all of these adjustments right in here. So let's get that a really saturated, maybe a more orangey color car. We'll bring the luminance down a little bit. So we just went from this to that, all with this HSL slider. The other really neat thing is you can grab this little point and you can click anywhere on the photo of the color that you wanna change. So let's try and change this orange and you can drag that around. Now that'll adjust those settings for you. So if I wanna make this a red car, now I have a red car. If I wanna go back and go a little more orange, if I wanna go a little more yellow, maybe we wanna go towards green, I can just keep clicking and shifting that color. Now we have a green car and it looks fantastic. And we'll zoom in here and you can see we're getting a little bit of artifacting, but we're pushing it pretty hard. If we did it a little bit less, it might be better. But I mean, from this view, especially if you're just posting this for Instagram, it looks great. The next tab is your effects. So you can do your split toning in here. So if you wanna have your highlights be a specific color or if your shadows and you can change the balance. Then we have our dehaze. If you want to darken it up or add some clarity to it, vignetting, and then your midpoint if you add some vignette. So let's do a little bit of negative vignette. Midpoint, feather it out a little more, make it a little rounder, protect the highlights, and there we go. Next is detail, so you can sharpen it up, fix the radius, detail, 
and then masking so it's only sharpening certain points. Then we have noise reduction, so we can get rid of some noise here. And then obviously all the settings that go with the noise reduction, color noise, detail, smoothness, contrast, all that good stuff. Next is optics, and this allows you to enable lens correction, so it'll take the lens that you're shooting with and apply specific corrections to it, whether that's vignetting or distortion, whatever that may be. The last two options here is previous, so you can jump back to all of them back to the beginning, so it's gonna fix the crop and everything, or just the basic tones, or you can reset it all the way back to how it was when you took the photo with the reset button here. But I like that, and what I'm gonna do with this is just hit the save button in the top here, save it to my camera roll, I'm gonna do maximum size, and it takes a second, there we go, it's out, I'm gonna jump back here, jump to my photos, and you'll see that photo is right there. That's how easy it is, ready to upload for social media or wherever you wanna send it. And that's pretty much it. I really like the new Lightroom CC on the phone. I haven't played around with it too much on the desktop, so I'm sure there's gonna be a little bit of differences there. But everybody that's complaining about it, I think it's a fantastic tool for photographers and people who are getting into photography that wanna have a lot more control over their photos, and they can do it all from their phone. Let me know your thoughts on the new Lightroom CC in the comments below. Let me know if you're gonna stick with the Lightroom Classic or if you're gonna move everything over to the Lightroom CC new version. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for new videos every week. And I'll see you guys in the next one.